This is exactly right. Hey, you guys, at the end of the show, we've got an exciting announcement to tell you about. So please stay tuned and listen to it. It's for you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to My Favorite Murder. The mini-sode. It is the Monday after Thanksgiving weekend. That's right. You're having to go back to fucking work. Sorry. Christmas stuff is in full effect. Ding, 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 yeah. Also, it's a marshmallow world in the ding ding. Uh, you know that one? No. <laughs> Are those really the words? No. Nope. It's a marshmallow <laughs> world in the ding ding. No. Nope. No. Nope. That's it's a Johnny <laughs> Mathis dun, dun, dun. And do 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 that yep. one. And don't forget okay. to hang up your socks. Do 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 that. What? Yeah. Well, my favorite Hanukkah song. Oh, I see. No, I don't have one. Is ding ding and ding 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 and ding ring ring of the ring. Jesus, 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 Mary and Joseph. Jesus. What a family, what a group. Aren't they fun? They didn't exist. We don't know who they are. We're not going to talk about them. We won't acknowledge it. We are only Old Testament. Mary, 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 Mary. Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Uh, okay. Oh, wait. I mean, should we just do a quick plug for their new Christmas sweater? That's a uh, oh, yeah. that's a Hanukkah sweater that's Georgia designed called, uh, and the slogan on it is "Lachaim bitches." It's actually "Lachaim." Oh, bitches! Lachaim. Lachaim. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We were we're making all this Christmas uh, merch or oh, holiday. No, it's Christmas. It's straight merch. up Christmas. So I was like, "Hey, look! I know it's not going to be a great big seller or anything, but can we get a Hanukkah shirt just so I don't feel like a complete fraud?" Because <laughs> like, come on. And then I'm like, "Yeah, of course." And then she goes, "What if it says Lachaim bitches?" <laughs> I mean, Lachaim. Lachaim, bitches. And then I couldn't stop laughing. I thought you were going to say no, but I'm glad you didn't. I support your Judaism. Thank you. And it's very light. There's not much to support. Yeah, that's kind of why. <laughs> you don't shove it down my throat. You don't. Uh, you don't fast that much. <laughs> Thank you, you know. Thank you. The way, the way Jews are doing all the time. Just no, no. Oh no, I'll have none. I'm here for the food. Yeah. You rarely say, does that. Did this ever have milk or bacon on it? <laughs> Which I really appreciate because it's been such a problem for me. I said put milk and bacon on it. You, now, oh my God. please. No, 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 no. Okay, you go first. <laughs> I'm going to go first. The subject line is clown attack during a soccer game. <laughs> hi, Karen, Georgia. St uh, hi, Georgia, Karen, Stephen, and furry friends. And then a wink smiley face with one, two, three, four, five mouths. Okay. Which I don't. I don't know. Teens. I don't, I don't know what you're doing. Teens these days. Teens, stop wasting your time with all these parentheses and get to the story. <laughs> so while I was in middle school, I was on a varsity soccer team in 2016. <laughs> Let's see. That means that you are in high school now. I was right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is I that what right. you were thinking in your head? Well, I said teens. Teens these days. Oh. How did I know you that? Were right. Holy shit. I thought it was a good slam, but it just turned out you were just very accurately figuring out who was talking to us. <laughs> that October was when the clown attack started happening. <laughs> while heading to the soccer game, my friend was telling me about her clown attack that happened what? while she was home alone. <gasps> but that's a story for another no, day. No, it's not. <laughs> teen. This teen is talking to us like fucking Alistair Cook. Teen doesn't know how to write a story. Introducing Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. Tell it now. We want to hear it. While warming up, my friends and I were joking about a clown coming out of the woods. Um, Probably the scariest woods. Don't fight me on that. Oh, the Birch Woods. Sorry. Okay. That's true. I'm, I'm, if I'm wrong, Stephen, would you look it up? I believe birch trees are the ones that are skinny mm -hmm. and white mm. and they have uh, leaves that turn yellow. Mm. And so I think this person is exactly right that the birch woods are the scariest woods. Stephen's nodding. Ooh, there we go. Let me see. Let me see. Oh. 
Oh, and they have like the Look. like dark marks on them and stuff. Yes. <gasps> That's beautiful. What are you talking about? Aren't those pretty? Yeah. We had birch trees in our front yard when I was growing up. They're my favorite. Those are gorgeous. Also, I want all of these paintings, Stephen. Ste- Let's read Stephen's email since he handed you his phone. Ooh, Stephen got a text that said, sex this and sex that. Teens! <laughs> Teens these days! Teen. And they're sexting! <laughs> Stephen, quit sexting! Stop it, Stephen, you teen. Okay. Birch woods. We've all agreed. Scary. You're right. The scariest. Uh-huh. Okay. And kick... So they're talking about, joking about a clown coming out of the birch woods and they're kicking a soccer ball into the other goal. We started playing and at the end of the first half, a clown comes out of the woods with an axe and starts running (gasps) and terrorizing parents. What the fuck? And then this is in all caps. We played for a whole three minutes after the clown comes out of the woods. (laughs) (laughs) What? When we stopped playing, my dad called me over and we ran to my car and called the police. What the shit? After a few minutes, we didn't see any sign of a clown. Next thing I knew, the clown was banging on my car window. Oh my God. My dad got out of the car and started fighting the clown. No, dad. (laughs) If you were wondering about the axe, it turned out to be fake. And my dad wrestled the clown to the ground, pulled off his mask. (gasps) (laughs) He didn't write this, but I was going to say Scooby-Doo style. Totally. Uh, It turns out it was the man that owned the fairgrounds. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) That's that's from Scooby-Doo. It turns out that the quote-unquote clown was a boy on the soccer team a grade above me and had brought the clown costume on the bus. What a little (laughs) shit. Teens! That's a fucking genius. The clown was coming from within the house. The kid got a $300 fine and his parents were hella pissed off. Oh my God. That's my story of a clown attack. SSDGM Addy. What a little shithead. Oh, God damn it. That's teens. the funniest fucking thing of all time. I'm never having a teen. Uh, yeah. Teens. Teens. Look, they're going to change the world with their clown hatchets. That's what a little fucking brat, though. What a bratty shit. But then also, I love his in the spirit of just kind of breaking up a, the intensity yeah. of a junior high soccer game. <laughs> where he's like, how about none of you? You all but relax you can't about this. chase parents with a <laughs> fake weapon. He did it. You can't do that. No one told him that he couldn't. And he <sighs> believed he could fly. <laughs> he believed he could touch the sky. No. Okay. I'm not going to tell you the name of this one. Hi, ladies and Steven. So, <laughs> it's just starts so, period. In 2012, my friend Josh and I booked a cruise as our first adult vacation. Ooh. We booked an inside room, just like the cheapest option, which was the cruise line picking your actual cabin because we were both 21 and could barely afford that. So, it was May and around July, uh, I saw they had assigned us a room. Being a millennial, mm-hmm, I imagined... <laughs> I immediately Googled the ship and room number only to find out that all caps, a man had strangled his wife to death in that room a few years prior. Shit. I think he had been drinking all day when the ship was docked and then got into an argument and strangled her to death in the bathroom. Lady. I find this out freak because I'm both a, mur- a murderino and super paranoid and call the cruise line to try to get them to, r- to switch the room. The woman is like, where did you hear about this? No one here knows anything about it. And I was like, Google it. <laughs> and they still wouldn't change it. I had to have a coworker call and pretend to be me for two hours to get that room assignment changed. Jesus. So it all worked out in the I just kept thinking about that awful movie Ghost Ship and was not about to be in the sequel. <laughs> Ghost Ship. <laughs> anyway, stay sexy and always Google everything, Christine. You are dead on right, Christine. <laughs> oh my God. That's so sad. I mean, here's the funny part too. Because it was about a cruise ship, there were so many things that that email could have been about. I know. Fuck cruise ships, man. I mean... Fuck it's, going on a cruise. It's rough. And Don't. my family are cruise people. Are they? Well, you know, that's how my parents met. That's right. They were working on princess cruises that's together. That's right. Um, and we went on a cruise for my mom's 60th, 60th birthday. Oh, wow. Um, which was lovely because it was to Alaska, so it's like good nice. visuals. Yeah. But, um, good visuals. <laughs> the visuals were excellent. If you're not getting pulled into... Uh, you know, somewhere where you never come back out of it. Right. Then you could just get be at sea and like have the ship go down, uh-huh. which is there was a couple nights where that it was very <gasps> strong um Ch- waves, choppy and shit. Or you it, could get fucking like food poisoning or like uh, so many things. Just, just you could just get disappeared. <sighs> okay, I'm not gonna redo the subject line of this because it ruins it. Okay. 
Hello, love, love, love your podcast. I'm in sales and I have a lot of drive time and your show constantly makes me laugh until I cry. Thank you. The ultimate compliment. Uh I used to competitively ski freestyle aerials. Well, wow. Well, well, well. My goodness. Is this Sunshine Peekaboo Street? What's her name? <laughs> <clears throat> trying to skip to the end. Um, <laughs> really, we're checking. <laughs> I'm, oh, it is Sunshine Peekaboo Street. <laughs> SSDGN Sunshine, Sunshine Pe- Peekaboo, Peekaboo Street. 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 I'm clearly a huge fan of skiing. <laughs> People often refer to it as that flipping shit on skis. Ooh. Every year, we, the U.S. ski team, wow, wow, used to travel to Fortress Mountain, Canada, for preseason training. It always seemed like the perfect place for a murder. Middle of nowhere, sketchy lodge, but beautiful hotel called, uh-oh, the Canana Skis. Say that five times fast. Ooh. She says in her email, I'm not even sure if it is a mountain anymore, but I did hear it was bought and getting a makeover. Okay. Is she, is she, is she trying to get us to go there? Yeah. Clearly we're going to go to your goddamn mountain (laughs) fortress now. I like the idea that she's saying, I'm not even sure if it's a mountain anymore. What is happening? If there's no hotel on it, does that mean it's no longer a mountain? (laughs) That's so, that's like a Zen Cohen. Anyway, to give you a brief one-on-one on on our sport. (laughs) Wow, what is this? She wrote to the wrong (laughs) podcast. (laughs) I'm going to forward this to a sports podcast. You have to chop our landing hill with shovels in order to soften the landing, as opposed to landing on a firm, compacted hill. Anyway, I remember being so excited to be at my first U.S. ski team camp that I got dressed super fast in the lodge, ski boots and all, and headed to the hill to help the volunteers chopping the hill. So I get there and grab a shovel and start chopping. I noticed there are some guys using huge pickaxes. Weird, but I just thought that that was their preference. As I'm chopping the hill and nearing the top and almost done, my coach peeks around from one of our jumps. She says in parentheses, it says Google freestyle aerials, <laughs> which, no. which could mean so many different things. <laughs> um, he started laughing and said my name and I went to him. I thought I was going to get praise for showing up early and helping prepare our hill. All he could do was laugh and shake his head. I was only 13. Mm. So my mom traveled to Canada with me and she was sitting in the lodge and he said, let's go find your mom. He's saying this through the laughs. So we head back to the lodge, which looks like the lodge in hot tub time machine when the guys return there as adults. <laughs> It's not a reference point that you can just throw out there like we all memorize that movie. Teens. Teens. When my mom and my coach, um, when we find my mom, my coach says, so Katie cannot be on the hill anymore in the morning until I come back to the lodge and give her the clear to come up. (gasps) He's not mad, but still laughing and smiling. I wasn't really sure what else I heard, but my mom's mouth dropped. And then she put her hand over her mouth and laughed. I'm super confused. And then they turned to me and my coach says, do you know what convicts are? (gasps) Sure, I said. (laughs) Well, it turns out at the mountain, it was okay to have convicts from the nearby prison, quote unquote, volunteer to chop the hill with pickaxes and shovels. So we didn't have to. I was also so, I was also so excited to be up there helping. I hadn't even noticed that all the convicts were chain linked together. Much love, Kate. Oh my God. (laughs) Teens. Teens loving skiing. Teens loving convicts. (laughs) That's insane that's hilarious that's so funny <clears throat> uh, now i know all about skiing aerial skiing is like flipping shit on skis <laughs> Google it Google it because it's <laughs> amazing Google it Google it with america's number one meal kit hello fresh you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door all you have to do is cook and enjoy hello fresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh 
I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner. And that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home. And that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. Okay, I'm not going to tell you the name of this one. Hey, guys. Getting straight to the story. Mm. So I was talking to my mom over dinner, and she was telling me about how badass my grandpa's mom was. Then she told me the best story I've ever heard, and I knew that y'all needed to know. So my great-grandma lived in a super small town in the panhandle of Texas. At the time of the story, my great-grandma was already a mom to three kids. The town was so small that everyone knew everyone. My great-grandma was especially close with all her neighbors, neighbors who were most likely a mile away. One day, she got word that her neighbor's daughter was sexually assaulted by a man in town. And my great-grandma was furious. Mm -hmm. They found out who the man was and somehow lured him to their house, most likely with the promise of sex. Uh When he got there, my great grandma hauled his house out to the backyard and all caps castrated him <gasps> Holy fuck. <laughs> what the straight fuck? up cut his balls off the man was too scared to tell anyone what happened and my great grandma was never punished and the neighbor's daughter was never messed with again my great grandma was honestly the coolest human being and regularly carried around a hatchet <laughs> once even shot the bag out of a man's hand who was coming to rob her wow I never met her, but I know for a fact she would have been a murderino. Um, Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. She's from Texas. (laughs) Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for an amazing podcast that keeps me entertained during my internship at a probation office. Mm. Stay sexy and don't mess with Texas grandmas. Much love from Dallas, Texas, Victoria. No. And the title was My Great Grandma Castrated a Man. Jesus (laughs) fucking Christ. Seriously. I... Here's the thing. We're just going to go on good faith that that guy was the guy that did it. The right guy. Please, for fuck's sake. Let's just pretend that everything went right in this it, story. This was an act of true ju- justice. Uh-huh. Um, it was a, an act of, but, but oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Either way, someone got castrated. I mean, it, there's nothing we can do about that now. Yeah. And it's none of our responsibility. No. But um, this is a very old story. The first thing I think of is like the guy that, that, that like just that morning was like, maybe I'm going to start parting my hair on the right. <laughs> and then that makes him look exactly like the guy that's a fucking hideous town rapist. <sighs> but that's not what happened. That's not what happened. What happened instead was that the hideous town rapist got his. That's right. By grandma. Uh, Whitey Bulger <laughs> likes it hot. Lighthearted. Right. Okay. <laughs> Hi, friends. I'm sure you've seen on the news that mass murderer James Whitey Bulger was murdered in jail. It says here last week, but I bet that was yeah. a while ago. Um, well, this brought up a whole lot of emotions as I'm from Boston and many of the kids I grew up with had Whitey connections, cousins who sold for him, uncles who were killed by him, etc. Like how... Everyone has a hometown murder. Everyone I know has a whitey story. Wow. Wow. Here's mine. So in the 70s, my dad was thriving, doing some bank shit in Boston. He owned a condo in, I want to say Quincy, Quincy. I know it's not like the former, I know it's not like the former Prez. Oh, she's telling me to say Quincy instead of Quincy. And customized uh, the interior of it. A few other people had customized their condos, so the foreman on the job asked my dad if he wanted to see the other places. For Lord knows what reason, my dad said yes. The foreman takes him around and shows him the interiors. They pull up to no other than Whitey fucking Bulger's condo to give it a view. Uh, it didn't seem like Whitey had moved in yet, but my dad says every wall had a heating panel on it where most homes just had one. And the foreman told my dad that Whitey specifically requested this, even though it was a fire hazard, because after being in prison in Alcatraz, which I nearly call (laughs) Azkaban every time I tell the story, Uh he never wanted to feel cold again. (gasps) So his condo was always kept pretty balmy. Wow. My dad said Whitey was a good neighbor who kept to himself and would often smile and wave as they were shoveling their porches. My dad always waved back, completely aware of who Whitey was Jesus. and what he was up to. Thanks for everything. You guys are so rad. I could go on about mental health, but you've heard it before and I have nothing new to say. 
<laughs> Come on. It doesn't stop us. Yeah. Stay sexy and don't move to Boston. If you don't like the cold, mare. Oh, wow. Shit. That's fucked up. We got to do Waddy Bulger sometime. I know. But it's just Hitman shit. I know. We're it's, not. It's not. Uh, it's just... I have Rough. one more. Okay. <laughs> Greetings from Ireland. I just finished listening to episode 112. I'm slowly catching up after starting with your first episode a few months back. I know you're interested in stories about people finding things in houses, so I thought I'd, you'd get a kick out of this. In my 20s, I moved into the attic... T- attic <laughs> attic of an old house in Cork City Ireland ah uh, uh, Cork <laughs> <laughs> you know who's from Cork who Karen no I can't remember <laughs> you oh no <laughs> say it again no my grandparents were from Longford and Galway okay say, say Cork again Cork <laughs> uh, Killian Murphy's from Cork okay perfect uh, it was <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was so dumb. What? I love it. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs> no, no, no. I shouldn't have said Is it. Is he that cute one? He's the beautiful one from Peaky Blinders. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it was directly across from a convent. So near, so near I could see the nuns heading from their rooms to Brecky every morning. <laughs> I can only hope they didn't get to see any of the sinful deeds I got up to in those days. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Sex sins. For a few nights in a row, I had a dream where I'd been playing the accordion on the street when someone stole it from me. I always woke up panicked and heartbroken. One day, I decided to investigate the cupboard directly behind the bed I was sleeping in. The cupboard went back a fair bit, and when I first moved in, I checked this cupboard, but all I could see was dusty old tiles and nothing else. I never used it as my bed was pushed up against it. But after these reoccurring dreams, I couldn't shake the feeling that I needed to check this cupboard again. I couldn't believe it when, right at the very back, I spied a very dusty object... <gasps> And dusting it off, I found that it was an accordion. Oh, Irish psychic. And not just an accordion, but the accordion in my dream. Yes, it was. It was so very, it was very old. So I never, it never worked and started to fall apart to the touch. But when I left that house, I took the accordion with me and I still have it to this day. Mm. I often wonder whether this accordion was stolen from me in a past life only to find me again in this life. No. Why not? (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Thanks for being in my life and for all you do, Nicola. <laughs> no. It, I love that story. The dream story is cool. Tell us, like, if you, I mean, maybe a new thing could be, like, weird dreams that have come true or, like, creepy dream, yes. dream shit. Only if it's something that actually came true and there's a story to it. We do not right. want to hear your fucking dreams. No. No, no, no one no. does. Do, uh, and, and that's true. My friend Greg Barrett used to have a hilarious bit about this on stage, but, and I didn't realize it until I watched him do it. And then I'm like, oh, I tell people my dreams all the time. <laughs> it's so boring uh-huh. to everyone accept you yeah because it's like if if i were doing it right now it's like georgia guess what last night i dreamed and then you could just name a series of nouns and verbs and you're and i'm like oh that was that really happened in real life no it was a dream dream. okay like (laughs) the end (laughs) don't do that you'll piss karen off i'm i'm already mad so good luck (laughs) make it good (laughs) make it good it has to be like my in my ghost story where i have a dream i wake up i wake my roommate up yeah she's on the couch she wakes up she's upset i say did you just dream about a little girl with braids and then she starts crying because she did and she and i had the same dream yes that's just a teaser if you want to hear the whole story, go listen to um, uh, Slumber Party with Allie and Georgia, because I tell the entire story. That's honest. right. Right? That's right. That was a fun, like, that. now I'm referencing your a backlog. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> That's the plug of the podcast Thank I don't you. do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep all that old shit alive. <laughs> um, send us your stories. My favorite murder at Gmail. And uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, we appreciate you. We do. We think you're great. La 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 Hi. Hello. It's Georgia and Karen, and we are excited to tell you that we are launching our new podcast network, Exactly Right. Yes, we're very excited to tell you guys about it. We've chosen a bunch of shows with specifically with murderinos in mind, and we can't wait for you guys to hear them. There's going to be more true crime. There's going to be comedy. There's going to be cat 
stuff and more <laughs> and a lot of very very special hosts very special hosts and and then at the end of this month we are going to announce the details of these the first slate of shows for exactly right yeah so stay tuned for that and in the meantime you can start following exactly right on twitter facebook and instagram and please sign up for the newsletter at exactly right you guys we're becoming podcasting moguls join us oh my god it's exciting we're so excited Goodbye. Stay sexy. Don't get murdered. Bye. Bye.